All right, I'm gonna show you how we can tomatoes the super, super easy way. That's what happens when you're expecting freezing temperatures and you want to gather in the last of the frost intolerant flowers and veggies um, before the year's first frost. Pretty fun actually. Feels like a flower shop in here. So beautiful. Peeled a corn and I thought to myself, you know what, I might as well just give this to Hammy. It looks so green. Yeah. And then I was like, well, they're kind of like, you know, bloated enough that they might be mature, you know, compared to these other ones. Oh yeah, ones, those look you know, good. Like that, that's yeah, not that's mature. Yeah, doesn't look. So I took a bite. This is the sweetest one I've ever tasted. What? Let's try it. Really? Because it's nice and hot. Oh wow. We're in the sunroom because it's mm, nice and hot. Nice strong flavor too. Dad, so yeah, that one's gonna be really good. And uh, oh, good, Everett! I'm glad you found the cat. I think it's cats, based on the, the, the ripeness that I found it. Because then there's other ones where they've been ripe for a while and they taste like cornstarch. Oh, okay. Hey, look at that one. Churning. It just has one pink kernel. Huh. <laughs> That's funny. A freckle. <laughs> so I mean, anyway, so I think it also some of them are different levels of ripeness, and that's why some of them taste not as sweet. That makes sense. Wow. But it's all food, so I'm happy. <laughs> if there's any clutter I'd want in our house, it would be this type of food. There's only like Harvest three clutter. left, and then I'm done. And I almost stepped on it, didn't I? All right, I'm gonna show you how we can tomatoes the super, super easy way. You can do it too. There's no secret to it, really. All we do is we take fresh ripe tomatoes. We don't boil them or blanch them first. We just wash them off. I don't know, get the get the core out and the any of the kind of dirty or chewy parts. And just lightly wash it in some clean cold water. And then chop it up into pieces that are just small enough to, to go in the jar. And we like wide mouth jars for that reason. It's a lot easier to handle. And just stuff it in. And I do mean stuff. I just take my fingers and squish it. You want the juice to, to fill in all the spots. Don't want any air bubbles because that can interfere with the canning process. And you actually want to have, let me get another jar. The instructions say to have about half an inch of, of space, of air space, above the top. But we've discovered that it works a little bit better. Maybe it's just our altitude or something else. But it works a little bit better to have a little bit more than that, maybe an inch or so. So we just fill it up that much. And I'll keep that top kind of clean actually pretty clean so you don't don't want it to interfere with with the sealing because this squishy rubber part is what seals to the, to the top of the jar all right so now I just need half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of uh, citric acid powder if you don't have that you can just use two tablespoons of lemon juice and bottled lemon juice is better than fresh in fact I've heard that you're not supposed to use fresh lemon juice which is fine for us because we don't have it around here all right, let me get those. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Alright, so here's the <laughs> just feeding the cats. <laughs> here's the citric acid powder. Very strong stuff, very concentrated, and yet my kids still like it. <laughs> they like it. They need to pour it on their tongues. Almost like candy, I think. I can't stand this stuff. Way too sour. These guys like it. <laughs> so again, half a teaspoon of citric acid per quart, and we do half a teaspoon of salt. All right, and then we put this on. Do you want to do that? Good job. And then this one. Yeah, other way. Yeah, there you go. And this only goes finger tight, so they describe it as fingertip tight. So just till it starts to give a little bit of resistance, and you don't want it to don't want it to be too tight because you want the air to be able to come out of it when you're boiling it. So the, the gases have to come out of the jar. And then when it cools down, that's when it sucks it, the lid down onto the jar, and that's how you get a seal. So it prevents germs from getting in. Isn't that beautiful? So that's that. We will stick this and six other jars in our big aluminum pressure canner and we'll boil it, well, process it. Um, we wait under 15 pounds of pressure uh, for 25 minutes and then let it cool it down naturally, which can take a while, um, a couple hours. And then we take it out and it's good to go. Salt makes it taste good. The citric, citric acid, acid makes it, makes it not get rotten. Yeah, it has to be. Uh oh. <laughs> so lemons and limes don't get rotten very fast. That's right. And when they're canned and they have the acid in them, it just makes sure that it kills more of the germs. Makes sure. Yeah, because it's too spicy. It's too sour for them. Dad, have you oh, it is for canning tomatoes, Dad. Yeah. See? Look. Was that good, Amy? It is for canning tomatoes. See? Alright, so now I've got seven jars. Our particular pressure canner holds seven quarts. Now, tomatoes can actually be canned in a water bath method, um, which basically means you just boil it. Um, completely covered and you have to do that for 85 minutes though <laughs> which is why we we do it the pressure canner way it only takes 25 minutes and there is a cool down period but we're not wasting all that fuel to keep it hot that for that amount of time so I just put them in there I start out with a couple of inches of water and once I put the jars in the water comes up to roughly half or maybe sometimes two-thirds uh, the height of the jars then 
Then I just put the lid on. And it just slides on and turn on the heat. It'll take about 15 or 20 minutes to heat up. I actually need to take this off because it's, it's good to make sure that this is clear before you have the weight on. So we let a little bit of steam come out, um, maybe for a minute or so, just to make sure it's nice and clear so that we don't have any problems with a pressure canner. It's got plenty of um, safety features, you know, multiple redundant safety features. And then I just put, since we're in a high altitude, we put the full 15 pound weight on. This is the equivalent of 15 pounds. It doesn't really weigh 15 pounds. And when, once this starts rocking like this, the steam makes it rock, then we, we time it for 25 minutes and turn off the heat at that point, let it cool down completely to where it, we can finally take off the, the lid. And it won't let us take it off until the pressure has been released slowly and naturally. And at that point, we're ready to put it in the pantry and we have tomatoes for the rest of the year. We're so excited. Well, thanks guys for joining us. We will see you very soon. So we appreciate you sticking with us and enjoying this bounty with us. It's, it's gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> Make sure and check the links below. All right, we'll see you later.